you know, Stella, if I really wanted to get an accolade to be recognized as one of, if not the most avid alchemists in the world, I would not go to you to get such accolades. Welcome back, one and all, to Thionite Plays, Dragon Quest IX, Sentinels of the Voices in My Head, making sure that I know that I have an incredible amount of alchemical experience. Stella, all I wanted to do was check my alchemomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomomom
We've started off strong by raiding a cabinet that is empty. There's a book called Avian Alchemy. Ooh, tell me what I can make with all of my feathers. Bird-related recipes are all about flurry feathers and crow's claws. Find some and you'll be the envy of your friends. Din finds recipes for kestrel claws, kite claws, and a fowl fan. He also finds recipes for an eagle wing and a feathered cap. Very helpful if I had a source of consistent flurry feathers, which at the moment I don't necessarily have, but that's fine. We don't need to worry about that at all. Empty house. At least this dude has a stove, even if it's oddly proportioned. Was this a stable? I feel like this was a stable. Why would you have a stable for dogs? Because it seems like this is literally only, it's like a dog stable. Mmm, mmm. Na 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 na. Bow wow wow ba bow ba bow wow. These are singing dogs. No wonder you keep them in a stable. You can't have singing dogs outside. She's a queer one, that Bloom girl from the mansion. She nearly jumped out of her skin when she saw my dog. Why does he wear fur and stick his tongue out all the time, she asked me. Well, because he's a dog. That's what I told her, of course. And you know what she said? Oh, nice to meet you, a dog. You should have hit her with the up dog. It would have been perfect. Uh, missed opportunities. Now that I know she's apparently quite naive, I need to find, I need to rent a dog. Dude, are you willing to temporarily loan me one of your singing dogs? Because like I, uh, no, she'll know what they are now. You've introduced them. Oh, you've ruined the opportunity. That is quite unfortunate. Can I have you? Bow, wow, wow, ba bow, wow, wow, wow. More singing dogs. Bloomingdale, the town of singing dogs. Oh, right, the dock. Is this where I can buy a boat? Excuse me, old man. I see a boat. Can I have it? Is it for sale? This is the harbor, my friend. But I'm sure you didn't need me to tell you that. What gave it away? Oh, wow, that is a nice looking boat. She's a fine specimen, don't you think? I am Boatmaster, and I know boats, and that bad boy is a nice boat. This ship used to rule the high seas from the lonely coast to the shores of Coffinwell, the pride of Bloomingdale, she's called. But ever since her owner passed away, she's been left to rot. I mean, it looks like someone's been taking rather good care of her. That does not look like a beaten down, rotted away ship. He was a merchant, you see. It was a bit of a tycoon, truth be told. Is he, 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 no, you said he was dead. I can't bargain with him. I used to work for him, you know? I was the ship's warden back then, employed by the fine folks up there in the mansion. What's that, lad? You've been looking for a boat, so someone still has need of the old girl. You'd better speak properly to Miss Bloom up at the mansion then. I'm sure she'll oblige. She's an outrageously generous young woman. Tell her the doorman, or tell the doorman you ran into me at the ship and I'm sure she'll let you see her. Marion's her name. Sounds like a plan, old man. That is going to potentially be mine one day. Apparently, we need to go up to the mansion to inquire about the price. The door is locked, and I can't get in because my key does not fit every lock. One of these days, I will find a key that unlocks every lock. But until then, we talked to the cobbler, so we don't need to worry about that. We talked to the cat. Did we go into the church? I don't remember. Why does it have two doors? Why do you just have a side door and another door so close together? Very strange. Oh, wow, this is a wonderful view. Oh, I didn't even realize. Interesting. Neat little bit of uh, continuity. Uh, continuity, I guess, world building? Gives you a bit of the three-dimensional taste. Yes, my child. Bloomingdale is indeed blessed with the most splendid ship. Yeah, I've already seen it. The pride of Bloomingdale. It's moored at the harbor on the edge of town. But since its owner and his wife passed away, it hasn't sailed. I suppose his daughter, Miss Bloom, must have inherited it. Hmm, many people are pointing us towards Miss Bloom, and I suppose we shall indeed go over there. Can I go up here? You can. What is over here? There's a well back here. Really? Did I know about this? I feel I feel like I've forgot. If I did know about that well's existence, I don't remember it. <laughs> Look at the bleeding size of it. There must be tons of loot in a mansion like that. Bolts, do not get any bright ideas. You already have your infinite gold from the gold mail. You do not need to rob innocent people anymore. Just keep it until the middle of the night. If you're going to do it, just make sure it's not something important. What? What? N nothing? Nah, nah. I was just uh, admiring your high-class properties. Eh, it's good property values. It's, it, oceanfront view. I'm just going to leave him alone. 
I'm far more curious about the well than anything else. Well, well, well. Are your lily pads more physical? No, they're not. None of the lily pads. Lily pads, I am beginning to find, just don't exist in this world. They're like, they're, lily pads seem to be like a reflection of something that exists in like a higher dimension. Because like, you can see shadows in the world, but you can't touch a shadow. It's just like a thing that exists. We know it's there, but we can't touch it. And, and a shadow is just like, the projection of something that exists in a higher dimension. Like a shadow is a two-dimensional object. It's a thing that exists only on a single up, down, left, right plane. And it's a it's it's flat. It's a flat thing. These lily pads are essentially the shadows of something that exists in a higher dimension. These are what remains in our three-dimensional perception of higher fourth or even fifth dimensional super lily pads we need to track them down because i feel like if we were to understand higher dimensional lily pads we would be able to unlock multiversal travel that is the key can i open this gate the door is locked and none of the keys i have will open it i am extremely disappointed oh fine i want to know what's in that treasure box when will we find out probably eventually if we're lucky. Hello, child. Do you know Do you know Marion too? She lives in the mansion. She's kind of peculiar. But if I make friends with her, I'll probably get oodles of lovely presents. It feels like everyone is taking extreme advantage of this girl's generosity. I am not going to do that. Who is the guardian of this town? Din examines the guardian statue. It's inscribed with the name of the guardian of Bloomingdale. Well, what is the name? I need to know who is responsible for this town. Who is responsible? Because they are shirking their duties. The only Celestrian I've found in the Protectorate is Pavlo. Pavo. I forget his name, but that's because my brain is Swiss cheese. And not because he's unimportant. But he's like the only one I found. No one is doing their job. It's so disappointing. I wonder if I'm the third best Celestrian, because literally no one else does anything. Like, I'm the- Me, Aquila, and Apis Major are like the only ones qualified to do anything in the Protectorate. So I wonder, am I number three because I'm the third best? Or am I number three because I'm the worst of the only three capable people? Questions for Apis Major. Hello, Grandma! Marion was frail as an egg from the day she was born, poor dear. In all my years of nannying, I never saw one so sickly. But she suddenly got better just recently. I bet old Mr. and Mrs. Bloom are looking down with a smile to see her well at last. Hmm. If I were a betting Celestrian, I would say that there's a glowing mystical fruit responsible for a mysterious healing of a sickly child. I'm also going to raid your panty drawer, because... There's that there, 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 one Spongebob episode, The Panty Raid. What a good episode. We need to go back to times like that. Hello, gatekeeper. I met with an old man. He said, ship, you want ship? Go talk to lady. And I'm like, yes, lady in house. House is here. I have come. Speak with lady, I desire. This is the Bloom Estate, home of Bloomingdale's most munificent citizen sorry I'm I'm, I'm I'm a new hire I'm kind of a new hire and I, I haven't actually got the speech down pat yet a lot of these highfalutin words from like the these these elite people the, the nobility it's it's a bit beyond me at the moment I'm, I'm still trying still trying to get the speech down pardon pardon any slip-ups mrs. Marion Bloom resides here you see hmm Oh, you're a friend of the ship's warden, you say? Then you're very welcome here. Do go in. I grew up with that old man. He was an incredible man. When I was a child, I used to watch the ships come and dock in the port, and it was a marvelous thing. For the longest time, I had dreams of being a sailor thanks to that man. He was such an inspiration in my youth. Unfortunately, a bit of nepotism got me a job guarding the gate, so here I am. I wish you all the luck in the world. Can I go around back? I need to see if there's any... They have a very high walls. So high, you wouldn't be able to see out of the windows in the first floor. Because, like, this window is head height. But this wall is more than head height. So unless you were on, like, the second floor, you wouldn't be able to... I feel like that would be bad for the view. It, it would be good to keep robbers and ne'er-do-wells out, but not necessarily for anything else. Let's go inside. We got our priorities straight, after all. 
Hello, old Fezmaster. Well, well, are you another hopeful? Hopeful of getting into Miss Bloom's good books, I mean? I, I mean, I'm here to inquire about purchasing a ship. I'm not necessarily hoping for a handout. I'm a bit better than that. Nah, not really. Really? I'd reconsider if I were you. It's well worth it, I assure you. I wouldn't lead you astray. Why does everyone want to take advantage of the generosity of this poor child? I mean, if you manage to make friends with her, she'll give you anything, absolutely anything you want. Something tells me she won't be able to give me magic wings or a halo of divine energy. Because that is my ultimate goal. I haven't forgotten that I greatly desire to find my misplaced halo. Can I admire the statue from afar? It does not seem like it. What is in here? Can I admire this statue? No. What about this painting? No. Nothing in here is admirable. Admirable. Being capable of being admired. How much gold? 16 gold. That's got to be the most gold we've ever found from a barrel. I will gladly take this. I will gladly take this. Let's thoroughly explore because just in the off chance, all three dimensions, that's where it is. Hello. Look at this. Isn't it beautiful? Miss Bloom gave me this necklace as a symbol of our friendship. Honestly. Wow. Everyone is taking advantage. How much are you guys willing to take and take and take, but not willing to give back? What have you done for her in recent memory? Wow, this room is filthy. There's cobwebs everywhere. We need to get the maid up in here. Treasure chest is locked. Ooh, I can unlock it. Ooh, strength ring. The tattoo. I never did anything with the tattoo. Ooh, I should probably do something with the tattoo. I might want to. Honestly, actually, hold on. Hold on. I might actually want to do that. Din, what accessory do you have equipped at the current moment? You have the full moon ring, which protects against paralysis. Actually, now that I'm reminded of the strength ring, give me a minute. I want to I want to check out cuz the, yes, there is there is. I know there's a recipe I can make involving the strength ring and the terrible tattoo. Right, a satanic stick-on design with an ominous odor about it. I believe Right, we never actually talked about this with in the episode with Garth Goyle last time. Right, okay. The terrible tattoo is something... You know what? I'm going to show it off. I'm going to show it off. I'm going to equip it. Oh, no. The terrible tattoo is cursed. It's cursed. Well, that that's perfectly understandable considering it's, you know, got satanic imagery on it. What that means, cursed items cannot be unequipped. If you put on a cursed item, you will not be able to unequip it for the rest of forever, the rest of the game, you are permanently cursed forever. Nothing can be done. Actually, there is something that can be done, and we'll look at that in a minute. Marion Bloom sounds like she's a bit funny in the head. Wow! Taking advantage of a child like that. I mean, such a huge Manson needs lots of people to keep it running, but she gave all her staff the sack. Well, I mean, it's probably because everyone keeps taking advantage of her. You guys are terrible people, you know that? <gasps> Magic door. It's locked, and I can't open it. Oh, man, I gotta remember. I gotta remember that there's one in Coffinwell, and there's one here. Why do you just have two random stools? Very strange. All right, before we go talk to the mistress of the house, the master of the manor, the matron of the mansion, we're going to go deal with the fact that we're cursed. And to do that, I'm actually going to go to Stornway just to save a bit of time because I need to go back there for alchemy in anyway. But uh, anyway, yeah, to get rid of curses, I believe you literally just need to go to the local church. I believe they offer a service to deal with curses, though I could be incorrect. And if I am incorrect, we're in a bit of trouble because I don't actually know how to solve it otherwise. Hello, Master Priest of the Mansion. Do you have any expertise? Purification? I believe it might be purification. Whom shall I treat for poison? Um, benediction. Is that, is that what it is? Lift a curse, right. Benediction is a feature that's offered by churches and will lift curses. It does cost a pretty penny, though, which is not something I realized. I did not realize it would cost me so much money. I mean, do it anyway. Oh, almighty one, lend us your awesome power. Lift the infernal curse afflicting Din. Oh, thank you, God of heaven, for blessing me with removing the tattoos. This just in, the protectorate only holy power 
can strip you of your demonic tattoos. Laser t tattoo removal just doesn't work. Praying to God, that apparently does work. All right, hold on. Give me a minute to consult the tomes to see what recipe, because I actually do need to check, because I don't remember off the top of my head. The tomes have been consulted, and my bags have been triple checked, and I believe I already have everything I need, thanks to getting that strength ring from that chest. Welcome back, my boy. Shall we get cracking? We absolutely shall. I believe I need to try my luck with this particular thing. I don't believe I have the recipe for what I need. I need the terrible tattoo, and I also need to combine it with um, an aggressance, right? An extract composed of the vigorous verve for victory. Alchemize it. I will combine the terrible tattoo and my aggressance, and I will combine them to combine into the combined form of the tough guy tattoo. I have transformed the satanic imagery of the terrible tattoo into a slightly more artistic rendition of a lightning bolt, or, you know, a, a guy doing four fingers up in the air, double peace signs, or the inverted upside down okay symbol. You can't see it because I don't have a webcam, but I'm trying to contort my hand in such a way that I match the symbology of the tattoo. It is not working because my, uh, my wrist is not flexible, but we got a tough guy tattoo, which is great. I believe the tough guy tattoo is just an improved version of the terrible tattoo except it also increases your attack stat a bit, which is perfectly fine. But now that we have that, I need to combine it yet again into an even more potent form. So I need to do a tough guy tattoo. I need one of my gold bracers. I have 99 of them because I need to keep a stockpile of 99 of the gold rings, the gold bracers, and the silver mail in case I ever need more infinite money. I have 900... I have 99, I don't have 900, I have 99 further silver mails elsewhere, so I need to buy, or I don't need to buy anything. One of you, gold bracers, and I also need, right, the strength ring, there it is, right, yes. One of these as well. If I combine the strength ring, the tough guy tattoo, and the gold bracer, I will be able to make an item of extreme potency called the Mighty Armlet. And the Mighty Armlet is quite a good accessory that I very much immediately want to put on Din. Because the Mighty Armlet, as the name Mighty imply, will drastically, well not drastically, but it will raise our attack a fair bit, which is definitely something I want. So Din, I need you to unequip your, or well, I need you to put away the full moon ring and equip this. My attack will go from 169 to 181. A fair bit bigger, which is definitely something I want. Much better than the uh, little bit of resistance towards paralysis, which is definitely nice, and I'll probably put that on someone. Uh, who? Sorcerer's Stone, that's good for Might. I don't want to change that. Contraband, that's good for... Resistance to poison. I don't know which would be better. Resistance to poison or resistance to paralysis? Hmm. We'll look into it. But yeah, that was the recipe that I wanted to make and was reminded of. So that's perfectly viable for our gladiator. So now that we're done with that, we'll go back to the mansion and actually see if we can, you know, see what's going down with the maid of the Muppet house. Oh, Miss Marion, I am here. I have returned. I have an extremely eclectic blunch. Blunch? I have a blunch of people who are greatly desire floor tunes. I don't I, I feel like forcefully introducing a bunch of L's to your sentences is a lot more difficult than adding the more syllabant S's. Anyway, I'm, I'm here for... I, I I saw that for sale ad on your boat, and I, I, like, I have a lot of money. I want it. Can I have it? Good day to you both. What fun have I you in store for me today? Well, Marion, um, I mean, Miss Bloom, I thought something sweet might be nice. So I baked you this delicious strawberry sponge cake. I do hope you like it. Oh, I could go for a strawberry sponge cake. That sounds delicious. 
A spun cake? A gunge cake. Ah, thank you. Yes, I shall have it set in one of our finest vases and put on display. Until the moles get it. Hmm, nasty moles. On dis- Um, Miss Bloom, it's a cake, not a- I mean, yes, yes, of course, as you wish. Marion, Marion, don't you want to know what I've got for you? What is it? Well, we, we girls prefer clothes to fatty old food, don't we? And you're always wearing the same old ribbon, so I got you a new one. I don't want it. What? But, why, why? It's really rather pretty. If I say I don't want something, I don't want it. My ribbon is the same one my true friends. It's perfect in every way. I shan't just replace it with something else. No, 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 get out of my sight. I want nothing more to do with you. B but I... Who are you? Are you a new friend? I very much could be. Do you have anything needs do that needs doing? I don't really feel super comfortable just, you know, introducing myself. It's like, hey, we're friends now. Can I have a boat? And she'll be like, I, I guess you could have a boat. I mean, it's like, I feel it's like, do you need money? Do you need like a monster eradicated? Do you need, I don't know, the top floor of your mansion cleaned out? Because I can do that. I am not afraid of getting my hands dirty. I shoveled manure for like a 300 years at one point. I, it's like, the only reason Angel Falls was not completely wiped out because of dysentery pox, I was purely because I actually wanted to do, well, I didn't want to do, but I recognized the need of picking up Aquila's slack because as much as I love that man and respect his ability as a Celestrian Guardian, if you ask him to clean out a stable, he will go away and vanish for like a few days decades and then by that point the problem will either solve itself or not be a problem anymore so i'm a dab hand at cleaning pleased to meet you you are a very verbose fellow aren't you oh <laughs> you have no idea we haven't met before have we no we have not i am here about your boat ad hmm my ship you'd like my ship i don't please excuse the voices in my head if you if it if there's an incessant pink-shaped babbling in your ear, ignore it. It does not speak for me. Certainly, you can have it. Take it away with you. Go wherever you please. As extremely generous as I find that to be, I really would rather prefer to buy it for, like, services or something. All I ask is that you let me be your friend. Well, sh sure. I Yeah, I could I'd be your friend. You're... You're not the same as the others. You've come from Marion, haven't you? Um, n no, I, I came for boats. I have an extreme love of boats. It, it's a new thing. I, I, one of Aquila's shows, the main character was on a boat, and I'm like, I want a boat. I'm going to base my current personality for this episode out of an immense innate desire for boating. So, I'm not here for you, I'm here for boats. Liar! I know you have. You've come here for Marion. Well, I won't let you. No, 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 no! I hate you. You're not my friend. I take it back. You can't have my ship. Get out! Really, Miss Bloom, there's no need to get so angry. Yes, let's all kiss and make up. We can make up, can't we, Marion? No, 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 no. I hate you. All of you. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Get out of my house. Get out of my mansion. Never return! Dear me, hun. Until tomorrow then, Miss Bloom. Bye bye cowards leaving me in here oh my it looks like miss bloom is in one of her moods again i think i'll stay out of her way for today wow all these people are cowards uh-oh hello and goodbye miss bloom no uh, please ma'am i i need the boat <gasps> blue ghost version something is afoot if there is she i twin sister complex i believe i've heard about this my celestrian senses are tingling what a handful, eh? Any idea why she boiled over like that? She bolted totally out of the blue. I'll tell you not to touch her with a large pole, but if you can't patch things up, we won't get that ship. I wonder if there's anyone around here who knows how to get in her good books. I didn't see many books in the library. I didn't even see a library. I mean, there might be something behind that locked door. I, As much as I would love to go through that door, I don't have x-ray vision and I can't actually see. Can I get in here? The door's locked. Oh, lovely. Is there anyone inside this accursed building that knows how to deal with angry small children? Is there secret entrances? Barrels? Nothing in the barrels. All right. 
fine. Maybe the guy at the dock. He said he worked with people for a long time, so maybe maybe that guy will be able to help. You're a steward, right? I know you're new, but do you have any insight? Boy, you there. How dare you upset Miss Bloom. Right, okay, fine. Negative reception. Are you guys all good? Do you have... You're old, right? Well, what a shocker. It sounded like she had just completely flew off the handle. I bet you jumped out of your skin, didn't you? Not really. I don't frighten easily. I heard she was quiet, sickly, gentle girl, but she seems full of beans. Oh, God, she's into cannibalism. Oh, the only people who ever enjoy beans are into cannibalism. Oh, we need to get the burritos. Oh, we don't have a burrito recipe in this world. I don't have a rice cooker. Well, I actually... The crackpot is only good for soup. One, the one time I tried to put rice inside of him, he kind of, like, burnt out and was out of commission for, like, three months while he recovered. Apparently, uncooked rice and alchemical processes are just... They don't mix. Fine. Whatever. Fine. Uh, let's go talk to the old ship right, Captain Masterman. I'm sure he's gonna have some knowledge because there's only so much uh, distractions I can force myself to go on before I'm like, just talk to the dude. Oh, it's you. Well, how'd it go? Miss Bloom said you could take her ship, no doubt. Actually, she kind of reneged on her very generous promise, which, I mean, it's fine. It's fine. I'm sure I can, I don't know, c clean the mansion, win her over. What? She flew off the handle and told you to leave? It's not like Miss Bloom to get angry at anyone. Why would she take offense at a complete stranger, I wonder? Well, I'm sorry, my friend. Without the owner's permission, I can't very well let you use the old girl. All I can suggest that you try asking Miss Bloom again, and I hope it goes better than last time. Oh, I know! Miss mm, Bloom is very fond of her nanny. Why don't you try and get on her side first? Uh, okay, who's the nanny? It's not like Miss Bloom to get angry. Uh, okay, do you... Who's the nanny? Who? I... She's very fond of... Okay, fine. We'll try and track down an esoteric nanny out in the world. The only nanny I know of is the one who nannied for the Princess Simona of Stornway. Maybe we go back to Zir. Is there anyone around? Do, are you the nanny? Mind how you go around, Miss Bloom. Her mood swings are becoming famous around here. She even dismissed the entire household staff, you know, for no reason whatsoever. What happened to them? I think they're all working at the inn now. Oh, they're at the end. Okay, good. I don't have to go. I don't have to make a magic trip out to Zir. Oh, magical inn. Do you have the magical heretofore unnamed nanny I've been seeking? We never did explore this place. There's a bottom floor? Oh, wow. There's a bar down here? Uh, excuse me. Good sir. Do you have things for sale? Even I was dismissed. Me, the butler. There were four others who went too. The maid, the cook, the ship warden, and Miss Bloom's own nanny. Do you know about the nanny? I'll never be able to break those barrels, will I? Hello, good sir. Genius, Gov. It's a master plan. It's my master plan. Can't go wrong. It's foolproof. What's what's the plan? Are you thinking of robbing the, the little miss? Blimey. Sounds like they're giving gold and jewels and stuff away for free. They must be absolutely rolling in it. <laughs> we'll just snatch the little princess away, and her old man will be tripping over himself to pay the ransom. Aren't her parents dead? I feel like I feel like she's an orphan. Eh, what? Nothing. Nothing I was just saying. Just, uh, thinking. Uh, must be fine family living in such a tidy drum. I didn't understand a single word of what you said. Your accent is being... Not only do you have an extremely thick accent, but it's muffled behind that stupid helmet. Those plates are very pecul... Per perilously. Pe peculi... Pe pe precipitously. Those plates are on the edge of table and table bad. Every time... Every... Okay, reboot the brain. Rebooting. Rebooting. Error code. Rebooting really hard. Ren, win, win, rar, crashing. Nope, we've broken through. Cool. The brain has reset. My words will not fail. Every time they fail, I just have to go to a more simplistic version of speech just to get my point across. Is there anything in here? Oh, nice. Ten dollars. I've stolen your ten dollars. I did used to work at the Bloom residence, as it happens. Funny you should ask. Hmm, what made me leave? Oh, I was fired. I didn't even get any severance pay. I didn't have a choice, honestly. I was thrown out. I still remember what happened, clear as day. It only happened like three days ago. Miss Bloom was combing her hair one day, and she just looked absolutely beautiful. I said to her, you look just like a doll, Miss Bloom, I said. 
She completely flew off the handle and threw everyone out of the mansion. Not just me, everyone. Wow. Wow. So it seems like you got everyone fired from one tactless thing. You don't want to call living people dolls. They might find that offensive. Ms. Bloom looked a bit unusual, you say. I wouldn't be surprised if it has something to do with the shining fruit she ate. Oh, I knew it. Let me guess, you prepared her a magical salad in an effort to win her favor or make sure she got better. And then she got better, but then she changed because the mystical fruit, it's the radioactivity. Humans are not meant to consume radioactive substances. They have an insane amount of calories inside of them. Like, one little bit of radioactive material has, like, 2.3 billion calories. But, like, it's enough calories to last you the rest of your life on several levels. I'd be happy to tell you all about it, though. It was when I was still employed as the chef of the Bloom Residence. A very rare and exotic fruit. How do you know it's very rare and exotic if you don't know what it is? Something tells me that those figs are one in a million. Or, well, they're literally one in six. But those one, those six are literally priceless because they didn't exist before we made them. It's the it, it's the, literally the fruit of all of the substance we fed the world shrub. It was sent in order to try and cure Miss Bloom's illness. It was touted as a veritable panacea. We literally have panaceas in alchemy. You don't need magic fruit. Just like shell out a little bit of cash for an actual panacea. Like I could literally go right now and make not only a panacea, but a perfect panacea. Sure enough, after she ate it, it was like she was a totally different person altogether. Fit as a fiddle. But after that, she didn't eat anything at all, and she started to behave very strangely. I'm sure the fruit was to blame. Right, blame the fruit. Nothing else could be the cause. Even in this case, you'd be absolutely correct. Are you the nanny I'm after? Listen to her. Meow. Meow. I mean, it's a sad meow, isn't it? Oh, it's more like, meow. Meow. I wonder why, if only we could understand what she was saying. Charles, I know you should have the ab The cat has a, a, a qu The cat has a quest. Pardon me, Mr. Cat, do you have a quest? Meow, meow, me, meowzer. Meowzer, meow, 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 please, meow. You've received a quest request. Will you put yourself to the test? Help me out here. A cat called Meowzer in Bloomingdale has meowed a request at you. I will accept this cat's request. I will find a can of tuna for you. Mm, meow. You've acquiesced to the quest. Help me out here. Okay? I don't know what that... What, what, do, you, what do you need? Meowzer. Meow, meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Okay, I'll try. I will try and find a cat linguist. Does anyone here speak cat? You know how the innies always take place every four years? Well, did you know there hasn't been an actual innie winner for ages? How could it take place every four years, but there not be a winner? Is there like no inns in the rest of the world? Why? That doesn't make sense. It's all because the man who was the last awarded the incredible entertainer title disappeared, but no one surpassed him yet. I feel like if someone achieves a title... It, it and they disappear. It just it just goes to the, to the next person. It doesn't matter how eligible they are. It doesn't matter if they're better or worse. It just goes to the next. That's a stupid way of giving out innies. I believe they're called. Our inn here, the flowery beds, enters the innies every time. But we only ever just come away with second place. It's so frustrating. Well, I mean, what kind of game show? Re reward sh show any entertainment place do they just like not award a first place i feel like they have to judge the best of the best of who enters like if there's only one entry you automatically get first place it doesn't matter if you don't live up to the standards of last year's winner it's like if they don't enter they they can't be judged that's such a weird way of doing an in show like how much viewership do you honestly get anyway baffling humans are so weird so we i don't understand them where is the stupid nun who am i looking for the staff is in here who where is the nanny who do i need to talk to i am at a complete loss where is the nun i did you yeah yeah where what i know you, the maid is the real the maid the chef the shipmaster, and the nanny who is the nanny? 
Where is the nanny? Was I actually correct when I said I have to go to Zier? Because I don't remember. Uh, excuse me, sir. This is the Flowery Beds Inny runner-up and one of the best inns in the entire world. Welcome to the inn. Do you know about the stupid... Uh, you don't have any knowledge, do you? Go away. Go away. I'm gonna go to Zier. Maybe, 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 maybe I've had a thought. Maybe all nannies know each other. There's like this underground secret nanny network. And everyone knows the other. Because if you have an ornery, upstart, bratty, noble child that needs a good spanking, you just be like, does any anyone else in the nanny network have any tips or tricks about how to deal with childish tantrums from nobility who's been born with a silver spoon in their mouth and never been told no? I bet that's the case. I'm going to go to Zier and check. Excuse me, Miss Petra. Wasn't there another lady in here? I'm probably imagining that. Excuse me, is there a nanny network that exists that I can, like, contact to track down a nanny? Losh, you met Mason, you say? He's built a stone replica Azir at the top of a mountain. Oh, right. Oh, you're Petra. You're right. You're the ex-fiancé who got married again. Right, I should probably... Yeah, I suppose I should pass on that message. Well, it's a very exciting story, dear. Who on earth told you about Mason anyway? Himself, I met him, or, well, I met his ghost. I think that counts. Mason. Man, that takes me back. There was a young man by that name, or, there was a young man by the name of Mason who lived here in Zier. He was my first love, in fact. It all ended in tears, though. He went off to his perf he went off to perfect his stonecraft and never came back. I felt completely and utterly betrayed. Wow, it really is all his fault. I kept waiting and waiting for him, much longer than anyone with any sense would have done. And yet, you say he's gone to the effort of making a stone replica of Zir? I find that very hard to believe. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. He threw away Zir just like he threw away me. He doesn't care a jot about us. Besides, even if it's true, it's too late now. You can't turn back time. Well, I mean, humans can't, because they haven't cracked multiverse theory. Do you know... It all feels like donkeys years ago now, but I had a fair old time of it winning Petra's hand. She had another sweetheart, but he went off traveling and never came back. It took her ten years to accept he was gone for good. She was worth the wait, though. I'm the happiest man in the world, that much is certain. Alright, well, none of you have nanny knowledge. That is a mistake. Is there anything in the basement? The basement is still full of dirt, which is about what I expected. The people upstairs are not old enough to do the manual labor required to clean this place out. Maybe one of these days, I'll clean it out and check out the grave that inevitably lies buried beneath the dirt. But I don't know what to do. And I might have a solution, but God, am I loathe to, to do it. I'm gonna do a tiny bit of talking around Zier because I did see at least one person with the radioactive blue bubble. There's been so many monsters about lately, it's awful. They even came and attacked my crops, the cheeky blighters. If only there was someone about who was high enough of a level to scare the confounded nuisances away. Um, what? Do I have your quest already? Am I not high enough level? Dude, lower your standards. I'm about the most powerful person that's ever stepped foot in Zir. Can't believe this. All right, no one in Zir has any solutions. I am out of ideas, so I'm going to consult with Stella. Stella... Do you have any idea what to do? Good to see you finally taking pride in your appearance. Shut up. A 10% full wardrobe makes you a follower of fashion. Wait, my wardrobe? <gasps> my wardrobe completion is at 11%. Wow. Look at my accolade. Follower of fashion presented to Din for a wardrobe covering 10% of all equipable items. Wow. I am a trendsetter. I am a fashionista. A master of the wardrobe craft. But I, um, uh, didn't actually come for more accolades, Stella. I'm here for a list of what to do. Do you have anything to say? Why the flap did Marion flip off the handle like that? That's the trouble with these rich little dolly madams. They're all too loopy. Okay, wow. Okay, fine. All monsters. Wow. Garth Goyle. No, you're not allowed- you're not allowed to look at the actual bios of those things. That- they don't exist. They're only my bios. My bios are the canonical uh, bit of blurb knowledge about them. 
fine. What about, what about the thought bubble? The story so far. Upon arriving in the town of Bloomingdale, Din found out about a rich young woman called Marion Bloom, who happens to own a very, very fine vessel of a ship. Din met with Miss Bloom, but for some reason, the young madam flew off the handle when she saw him. <sighs> fine. Not even the omniscient tomes inside my head, nor the empty, brain-dead spirits of pinkness know what to do. I suppose I have to go back to Bloomingdale to figure out what to do. No one wants to tell me who the nanny is. Oh, 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 progress. Who would have thought that the way to make progress was to talk to people in the immediate vicinity of an event that took place? Where can you find her nanny, you ask? She lives in the house just across from the mansion. Wait, what? What house? Did I not go in every house? Is it this house? Are you the nanny? I spoke to you before. You're the grandma that I stole like $10 from or something like that. That's right. I was Miss Marion's nanny. Oh, I went too far afield. I'm an idiot. I should have just been like, what's the nearest location that I can check? And it, lo and behold, it, the nearest location that I checked contained the purpose of my purpose. Bless her. I do miss the job, I must say. Goodness me, are you sure? She's locked herself in her room. Oh, dearie me. That's an awful worry. But I don't know if I can help. I don't know if she'll want to see me. Ever since she got well, it's like she's a different person. She's very hard to handle now. She won't talk to a staff at all. I don't know what... Wait. Oh, wait. There is someone she might listen to, I suppose. The toy maker. He made her a doll, you see. And she absolutely doted on it. Bless her. He lives just next to the church. Yes. If Marion's having one of her temper tantrums, I should think the toy maker's our only chance. Thank you for that incredibly useful knowledge and the direction upon which I could find, said Toymaker. Way better. They live next to the church. Are they in here? Does the cobbler double as a toy maker? No, wait, I bet it's you. You are bald and you only exist now. Oh, hello. Pleased to meet you. I'm Randolph. This used to be my workshop once upon a time. I was a toy maker, you see. Ah, oh, but I'm getting on a bit now, you know. I retired quite a while back. What's that? Did I ever make a doll for Marion Bloom? Goodness, how on earth would you know? Ah, you were talking to our nanny, of course. Ah, that takes me back. But how in the name of the Almighty did you get on that subject? She went into a temper tantrum. I went to seek professional advice from certified professionals, i.e. her nanny, and she was just like, ah, she fired me. I can't help you. But you know who could? The person who quit before he was fired, the toy maker. So here I am. What? She's being difficult, and she shut herself in her room. Oh dear, oh dear. That is a worry. Thank you for letting me know. I don't really know why, but Miss Bloom has always had a soft spot for me. Even when she'd banished the rest of her servants from the house, she'd always agree to see me. Why don't we go over and see if I can't coax her out of her room again this time? Finally, progress! I will get to the bottom of this encounter. I will get in her good books. I will get that boat. Hello, Miss Bloom. It's Randolph. In her room, I suppose. Marion, dear, are you in there? Whatever's the matter? You haven't fallen ill again, have you? Knock, 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 knock. The door appears to be unlocked. Perhaps she's gone out somewhere. Uh, I'm coming in now, Miss Bloom. If you're not decent, shout at me. She's mid... Words, they get stopped in my throat occasionally. It's a Celestrian illness. If I try and say something that I'm not legally allowed to say, it, it, it kind of just automatically, it doesn't get past my, you know, Adam's apple. That's most odd. There's no signs of Marion or the doll I made her. Hmm? Do you see something your toy maker eyes can see? Look at this. There's a letter on the bed. Well now, let me see. What does the letter say? We've got the girl. If you want to see her again, you better bring all your dough up to the cave up north. Oh, those stupid muffled men in the masks. They actually went through and kidnapped her. She's an orphan. No one is going to pay for her. God, I'm going to have to go and save her. Hmm. My goodness, this is outrageous. I mean, the spelling is just... I mean, we must raise the alarm at once. Miss Bloom's been kidnapped. Miss Bloom's been kidnapped, everyone. The ghost sister. 
I shall speak and converse with the ghost sister. As well as the teddy bear. It's a well-loved soft toy. There's something embroidered on the underside of one of its feet. Is it Andy? To Marion, with love from Mama and Papa. Aw, how adorable. They won that thing at a carnival. Their first date, where they met, happened to be at a carnival. And they won the ring toss game, where they got this giant bear. And then kept it ever since to present it on their 10th birthday to their daughter. What a lovely sentiment. Hmm. Man, I wish I was a ghost. That way, I wouldn't have to, like, open doors. I could just go through them. That's, like, the ultimate reason to die. To, like, go through doors without having to open them. Who cares about locks when you can just scooch on past them? Oh, it's a graveyard, I bet. Oh, this is probably where they buried the parents. Din reads the inscription on the gravestone. In loving memory of a great man whose rare business talent brought fortune to this blooming dale. Oh, that's how the name got named. Din reads the inscription. Behind every great man is an even greater woman, in loving memory of a dear mother and a faithful wife. Oh, her parents. Well, then whose grave is this? Din reads the inscription on the gravestone. In memory of my one true friend, may you rest in peace. That ghost was the splitting image of Marion, don't you think? What do you reckon's going on? You don't think some of things happened to Little Miss Moneybags, do you? Have some respect. There is... Is there anything you hold sacred, Stella? Calling the Almighty a prick? Calling whoever you're looking for fat guts? I mean, like, how... Until I see the man, until I see the man and see he's, like, 600 pounds, I'm going to assume that that's, like, some kind of wretched nickname that he hates. And then Little Miss, she is a child. She is an orphan. She wants friends. She's trying to get friends in the only way she knows how, and that's generosity. It's not my fault, and it's not her fault that everyone takes advantage of that generosity. I was like, I want to pay for the boat. I want to do some services for the boat. I want to earn the boat. I don't want to just be given the boat. Have some respect, you stupid fairy. Empty-headed fool. I am... Every time you talk, I am more and more convinced that that flower in your hair is your brain. And the only way it gets any kind of energy is if it absorbs enough sunlight. Like, Stella is some kind of photosynthesizing brain monster that subsists on sunlight. And every time, and like my head, it's pretty dark in my head. It's like a black hole up there. It's like, it's no wonder she's an idiot because she, abs she absorbs sunlight and there's no sunlight in my head. I, I'm not a very bright person. She's my one true friend. Oh no, now I'm hearing voices. I'm going to become the sage of, uh, of friendship. I'm going to get an unnamed sage's four times similar story. Because like, what was up with that? They like, I'm going to make these sages super interesting and so much potential. We're not going to name them. And every time you meet one, I'm going to tell the same story from the same perspective four different times. I'm like, name them, please. Maybe an extra bit of details from their particular perspective for, you know, a more complete picture of the... In I, I, the one... Th that was the plot point that I'm like, could you please just do a little bit more? It's her. Can you just shut up, Stella? No one cares about your opinion. Hello, ghost child. Oh, she even curtsies. She's such a polite young lady. I am Marion Bloom, and this is my grave. Please don't step on the flowers. I planted them very carefully in life and tended them with my mother. The girl, the poor girl who has been kidnapped is my doll, Marionette. My precious Marionette, who was given life by that mysterious fruit. Oh, so you died, and the doll came back to life because of the fruit. Wow, those figs are powerful. They can imbue life even on marionettes. Are we going to get a flashback? <gasps> Ghost flashbacks. <gasps> oh, everything's in sepia. It wasn't like, I wasn't like the other children. I couldn't play freely outside. Marionette was my one and only companion. We don't talk about Barry. He's been perpetually put in the timeout corner ever since the uh, manslaughter incident when I was seven. Yeah, we don't talk about it much. There was like the 
a lot of missing children after that. She was everything to me. We played together every day. I was really very happy, but... As my condition worsened, I knew that it wouldn't be long before the Celestrians came to take me away. Wow, you're a very well-learned individual to know about the Celestrians. And then one day... Shining, glimmering splendor in the form of a beautiful fruit. One of my servants brought me a mysterious fruit that was thought to heal all ills. There, they, how do people just make thin things up like this? I'm like, this is a golden fruit. It will heal all ills. It's like no one would know anything about these fruits. Because they, they, they didn't exist before I intervened. It was a beautiful golden color like the sun, but it was too late for me. I had already given up hope by that point. I was sure that my life was already over. Nothing could save me, not even that fruit. Look, Marionette, isn't it pretty? It looks just like a star the way it sparkles, doesn't it? And it smells delicious. Why don't you eat it with me? I'd like to share it with you. It's a very big doll. Like, a, a life-size doll. What a toy that would be. Like, having a life... Because, honestly, thinking about, like, the logistics of this gift, this marionette, that'd be really creepy. Like, your local town's toy maker makes a life-size, one-to-one, still-life version of yourself as a doll. I feel like... I feel like that, that comes across as a bit more creepy than he might have intended. Just imagine, marionette. Imagine if you could walk and talk, just like I can. I'd be so happy. If only you could come to life so I could have just one true friend before I... <coughs> <coughs> oh, not the tuberculosis. The, the Celestrians are <coughs> coming for me. <sighs> wow, this fruit can fly. Flying figs. It's a miracle. The doll, it's come to life. I feel like that would be the most terrifying experience of your life. If the golden shining fig flies away into your doll, blinds you like a flashbang, and then the doll comes to life, I'd be like, what is happening? Please, please, it's like a skinwalker, but in doll form. You are Marion. You are my friend. I know how to articulate the movement of my ligaments and limbs. I can now mimic perfectly all human behaviors. I'm so happy to be able to speak to you at last. What the hell are you? How did you come to life? Marionette, you're... you're really... <coughs> Ugh, sorry, don't mind the blood splatter. It, it happens. I don't have that signature towel that I keep in your pocket that I fold up and put back in my pocket to surreptitiously look at the bloodstains and be like, Oh, if I were in a movie, I'd know I'd die in the next few scenes. The Act 2 low point. Why now? Just when I... It's not fair. Oh, hold hands. What do you mean? I... I'm... Marionette. I leave everything that I own to you. All that is mine is now yours. I give you my life. If people realize that you're a doll, they... They won't let you stay here. You must pretend to be me. I hope... That you have a happy life. As Marion. Live the life that I... Could not. Flashback over. Make lots of friends. As I never could. And then I dropped dead right then and there. My purpose in life was incomplete, but I couldn't hold on. Marionette made this secret game for me so that no one would realize that she wasn't me. The only way to get to this grave is to cut through her room, and no one ever has the verve to go into her rooms. Noble Celestrian, it is all my own doing. I am the only one to blame. I really, really doubt that you're the one to blame, Miss Marion. Like, you were just, you, you were a, you were a dying child who just wanted a friend. You are not to blame in anything about this. Please don't punish, I'm not going to punish her, I'm going to go and save her. Seems like we have our heading now, Stella. We need to go to the cave in the north. Kind Celestrian, please help Marionette. Help my one true friend. 
You say the command, I give the order, and I carry it out. You say jump, I say how high, ma'am. I get stuff done. Let me get this straight. One of those figs has turned a lifeless little doll, it was not little, into a moody little madam. She really does not have a lot of experience with human emotions. I don't hold it against her. Now I've heard it all. You really don't get out much, do you, Stella? You didn't have a lot of television on the Starflight, did you? Still, you can't really turn a blind ear to a cry for help like that, can you, noble Celestrian? Just shut up, Stella. Please, just get back in my head. Chop, chop, then. Get to work. You've got a doll to deliver from the clutches of doom. Crutches. Clutch it. Stella, your elf speak. Just get in my head. Thank you. I don't want to have to deal with you right now. Nuts, I need you to say a most solemn prayer over these graves. Because you're the priest, you must pray for their immortal souls. I will do what I can to make sure that they go into the alms of the Almighty but you have to pray for their mortal souls. I will handle the immortal souls. You handle the mortal souls. Let's get to it. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. Bit of a long one, but lots of talking and a little bit of progress. And we have our heading for the next episode. We are going to the cave in the north of Bloomingdale and making progress. We'll be fighting more enemies. We'll be searching for ghost dolls given life by immortal sacred figs from the gods. And it's going to be a fun old time because there is a special enemy. There is a very special enemy in that cave that the, the voices in my head, in my head, not the voices in Din's head, the voices in the head of the voices in Din's head have told me to tell him that there's an enemy in that cave that we really, really want to fight and we're going to do it rather shortly. So we'll be doing that in the next episode. So whether you watch this episode for 30 seconds or the entire thing, thank you so much for putting up with an hour of my babbling, terrible grammar, awful English, stuttering mess. If you've made it this far in the episode, please drop a like because like, it's the only thing that I rely on in this world. The only thing that gives me joy is seeing that tiny number tick up one by one by one by one. But never, ever, ever reaching double digits because there's like maybe 10 of you watching consistently. I don't know. <laughs> but if you're watching this, shout out to you guys. You're freaking awesome. Thank you so much for enabling me to make more content like Dragon Quest IX. Sentinels of the flower-covered graves and marionettes given souls. Next time, the cave. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Later.